and welcome. This is the news at 11. My name is Joyce Mabika and thank you for joining us tonight. In our first report, Zanu PF Secretary for Youth Affairs, Komet Kudzanai Chipanga, has issued an apology to Commander Zimbabwe Defense Forces General Constantino Chiwenga and the top hierarchy of the army over utterances he made about the ZDF commander and the army yesterday. Let's hear him speak. Public apology to the Commander Defense Forces, General Constant Govech Wenga, Commander Zimbabwe National Army, General Philip Valerus Banda, Commander Air Force of Zimbabwe, Air Marshal Perence Shiri, the Generality of uh, the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, and the entire nation of Zimbabwe. We would like to apologize for the statement I have made, made yesterday at Zambia headquarters together with my executive. I, as the leader of the Revolutionary Party's Youth League, I have reflected and personally admitted that I had, I was ill-advised to read a statement which I and the Youth League had not originated, neither authored. The document which I read was handed it over by one road in Dangarimbezi in the morning at around um, 8.30 a.m., which was denigrating your high office and uh, your person. Therefore, I kindly request General Chuenga to please say accept my apologies on behalf of the Youth League and myself. We are still young people, we are still growing up, we learn from our mistakes, and from this big mistake, we have learned a lot. But I also like to emphasize that um, this statement which I have given, I have not been persuaded, neither coerced or forced to do as such. I'm emphasizing that um, I have reflected on my own as, the, as, as, as a young person, as a leader of the youth league, hence I have come to this juncture of offering myself to the state media to give this public apology. We shall also make splendid efforts to approach the commanders of our defense forces in person so that we convey this apology. I thank you. That was comment. How about that? Hmm? Okay. I hope you guys can see and hear. If you can uh, hear me, please, please uh, let me know you can hear me. Uh, just type out that you can hear me if you can hear me. Um, type out that you can hear me or press the like. Click the like button. Like button if you can hear me or type it out. I just need to ensure, make sure that you guys can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Loud and clear now. Good. Uh, thanks, Lee. Uh, can you guys see me? If you can see me, hearts button. If you can see me, click the hot, 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 hot. There's a little hot button. Click it if you can see me. Um, or type it out if you can see me. Okay. When, when, when you, we can hear you. Okay, I'm talking about seeing now. Can you guys see me? Okay, good. Okay, so it looks like we're in business. All right, so uh, I know a lot of people are giving comments about my juicy right now. I can explain it. I can explain this juicy, okay? I couldn't find the Chipanga juicy. Apparently, when I went to the shop where he got his juicy, they told me that the juices have run out. So can you imagine? Chipanga has sold out all the Apollo jerseys in Zimbabwe, they're gone. So for any people out there who are trying to look for an entrepreneurial idea to go into, we are talking majete kupinda, we are talking about industry, we are talking industry, we are talking about industry, we are talking about juice, we are talking about juice, we are talking about juice, so yeah, so no more my juices. So I kind of had to settle for this one. This is the closest I could get to a Chipanga Apollo Juicy. And the reason I needed it is because I myself would like to make uh, a statement tonight. Okay? So I hope you guys can see me and you can hear me properly. Public Apology. 
I, Lumumba, 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 as the people's champion, would like to make an apology I would like to make an apology to the former president and head of state and commander of defense forces and and um, and first secretary of Zano PF and husband to Mugabe, husband to Mugabe, husband to Great. I would like to make a public apology to former president Robert Gabriel Mugabe. About a year and a half ago, I went on a stage and I said, Robert Gabriel Mugabe, uh, F you. So, I would like to apologize. I am young and I am still growing. Uh, I was just angry because, you know, you know how you were behaving, that your behavior was very much offside. So, I'm, I would like to say I'm sorry, I'm young and I'm still growing. And on behalf of all the people who said I shouldn't have said it, I would like to also say I shouldn't have said it. So, uh, Mr. Mugabe, wherever you are, when you get to watch this, I want you to know I am sorry because uh, so anyway, I'm sorry. And, and, and charge that foot. Yeah, good. There we go, guys. Now that I'm done with my apology, let's go into the show tonight. I've got a couple, a whole lot of stuff I think I want to touch on tonight uh, based on the events that have happened this last week. My God, I mean, what what a week we've gone through as a country. What an app, what a, what a week. And what a narrative I'm now realizing is taking place in our generation. If you go on social platforms where Zimbabwe is being discussed right now, there is two types of narratives that are going place, uh, that are taking place. Two types of narratives, okay? Please pay attention. The two types of narratives. Narrative number one, and I'm going to go into detail with both narratives. Narrative number one is you now have a strong narrative of very misguided elements, actually, of people who, who, who want to beg of us to be very stuck on the past, Right? The whole political dispensation in this country, the whole political narrative of this country is coming to a door from the end, okay? So, you have a whole narrative of Zimbabwean politics coming to an end. Now, you have group A. In fact, let's say door number one, which people have to enter. Door number one is the door you can choose to enter and remain stuck on the narrative of the past. Okay? If you enter this door, you can continue looking at the past. It's the door that says, let's talk about what Mnangagwa did in the past. Let's talk about what Lumumba did in the past. Let's talk about Robert Mugabe Samo. Let's talk about Grace Mugabe Samo. In fact, let's talk about last week Samo. That's door number one. The door where we can get so stuck as a generation speaking about the past. The door that says, what is wrong with everybody? What is wrong with the past? What is wrong with this person? What is wrong with that person? That's Door number one. Then you have door number two, which shapes narrative number two. Door number two says, let's look forward and make a decision. What do I want to be of my life going forward? Door number two says, I want to focus on where I am going, where we are going as a country, and I want to understand what that means. Here is a question I want to ask you. If you're watching me right now, okay, whether you're watching me on your phone, or whether you're watching me on your laptop, on your iPad, if you're watching me right now, answer this question. Because this is the single most important question our generation has to answer. Answer this question. What do you want? Are you able to answer that question? Are you actually able to answer that question? Or are you so stuck on the past? Answer this question. You, holding this phone, looking at my face right now, answer this question. What do you want? Are you obsessed with typing? Are you obsessed with commenting? Are you obsessed with the past? What do you want? Do you know what do you want? Because that is the single most important question 
we have to ask ourselves over the next eight months. Because after the next eight months, we're simply back again to political bickering. Back to political bickering. Eight months to decide, do you know what you want or do you want to focus on political bickering? In the last week, we went from Mugabe finally, um, uh, Mugabe finally resigning. Uh, everybody ululated. Everybody was happy. I was happy. This country was happy. Well done, Zimbabwe. If I didn't get a chance to say it, or I don't get a chance to say it, well done. Okay? Congratulations. We have been able to do what for so long many people have failed. Pat yourself on the back. Well done. Whether you participated by going on the street, whether you participated by, by uh, tweeting, uh, Facebooking, whether you participated by uh, paying for a combi, by writing an article, singing a song, well done. The job has been done. So Mugabe gets out of office. Now let's analyze the events that took place. So first you had Emerson Nangago comes back into the country. And Emerson Mnangagwa goes to Zano PF to give a speech, right? Emerson Mnangagwa is like, you know, like my 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 dad, my sugar daddy, huh? My my, I can give you whatever you like, my sugar daddy, my dad. So he knows how to give you exactly what you like, right? That's like Emerson Mnangagwa. He's like the 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 country's sugar daddy right now. So he goes to Zano PF, and he knows exactly what Zano PF wants. So. He gets to Zano PF, and when he gets there, he doesn't really talk about policy. He doesn't really kind of, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not a statesman when he gives that speech. He's an absolute politician because he understands that in that moment he had to give them the excitement. That's what he did. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. In response, Zanu PF went wild. Crazy excited. Very, very exciting. He came in, boom, full of excitement. Did you guys watch that? Did you get to watch that? That was some exciting stuff. Then, two days later, he comes and he comes to the National Sports Stadium. Now, at the National Sports Stadium, he understands he can't give the same person in the speech. I mean, the beauty about being in Zeno PF uh, is you can get away with saying a lot of really dumb things and you can actually get away with it. I mean, Chipanga said some really dumb things and he got away with it, right? He got away with it. Uh, Grace Mugabe used to say astronomically dumb things. I mean, things that were so dumb it was beyond human comprehension. And she got away with it because that's kind of what happens there. You can get away with saying dumb things. So, Zanobia's speech, nothing exciting. But let's go to the National Sports Stadium. National Sports Stadium, the president gets appointed. And he doesn't give an exciting speech. It was not exciting at all. Munangagwa did not give an exciting speech. President Munangagwa did not give an exciting speech at the National Sports Stadium. What he did, however, is he gave the correct speech. He gave a speech that touched on all the right buttons. Because what he understood at the stadium is he needed to speak not just to Zimbabwe, but he needed to speak to the world. So he spoke on the issue of sanctions. He spoke on the issue of re-engagement. He spoke on the issue of the, the 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 land issue. He spoke on the issue of on the issue of justice. He spoke on the issue of elections. He narrated a speech that spoke the right message and he sent the right signals to the world. Unlike the Zano PF speech, the Zano PF speech was like was like you know that skrpa, boom 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 boom, bara boom bara boom bara boom, man's not hot. That was the Zano PF speech. The Zano PF speech was the man's not hot speech. Whereas the speech at the stadium, that was a, 
it was like a classic hip hop record. That's where he had to come and let the world know that he is ready to be president and he is opening Zimbabwe up for business. Now, if you came to the event, I've heard, you know, Zimbabweans are very smart people. Zimbabweans are very, very smart people. But we have to admit that there are also some very shallow Zimbabweans. Extremely shallow. And I'll, I'll help you understand. You know, someone might not know, am I a shallow Zimbabwean or am I a smart Zimbabwean? I'll help you understand. Here are the smart Zimbabweans. Smart Zimbabweans are able to look at everything happening in Zimbabwe right now. And they're able to see hmm? Shallow Zimbabweans say the shallowest things. So I heard statements like, Oh, Lumumba went to 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 the inauguration, so you have an OPF plant. I'm like, okay. Uh, another shallow statement. Oh, anyone who's there is because you're supporting Gwena. Ah, you're very you're 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 you're, 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 you're very bad, you're an OPF. I'm like, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. So Morgan Changirai got to the stadium before me, okay? I got to the stadium after Morgan Changirai. Hold on a minute. Bernard Manyenyeni, the mayor of Harare, who is MDC, got to the stadium before me. Hold on a minute. Edgar Lungu, the president of Zambia, got to the stadium before me. So did the Mozambican president. So did the Namibian delegation. So did the South African delegation. So are you telling me that these people are Zanu PF? Hey, hey, hey. These people are Zanu PF. Hey. You see your shallow self. You see your face shallow. How do you say that people who attend national functions, people who decide to work with the president are shallow Zimbabweans please I am begging of you the smarter ones now do you understand do you understand that we have a choice to make we have a choice to make whether we spend the next six to eight months fighting some more okay we can continue fighting each other or we spend the next six to eight months figuring out how do we finally start making it oops in our own country how do we finally start prospering so can i just say as for me i'm planning on making it in the next six to eight months i want to make it categorically clear for those who don't know who are still curious who wonder what is Lumumba doing? Let me explain it to you what I am doing. I am serious about getting rid of poverty in my life. Oh, I don't want poverty in my life. I am serious. I don't want poverty. I am done with poverty. Poverty, goodbye. The day I said goodbye to Lady Gaga is the day I said goodbye to poverty. So if you are enjoying poverty, I beg of you to continue enjoying poverty. As for me and my house, no more poverty. We are now on program of Wolo. Program of Wolo. Me, I now want to eat good zadza with good meat. I don't want to suffer. So I am absolutely prepared to work with this president. Simply because he is the president of the country. Over the next eight months, new millionaires are going to be made in this country. Okay? Across all industries. Let me help you guys understand something. There is a law in Zimbabwe that says... There is a law in Zimbabwe that says 25% of all access as far as resources, positions, wealth is concerned should be given to young people. There is a law that says this. Constitutionally and policy, the national youth policy of the country states this. You have to make a decision, my friend. When 25% of the land is given to young people, do you want some? When 25% of mining licenses are given, do you want one? When 25% of banking licenses are given, do you want one? 25% of government commission boards, do you want Do you want it? Do you even know what you want? Do you know what you want? Hmm? All I'm asking you guys to do is over the next eight months, position yourselves. Here's what I know about many Zimbabweans. And uh, Prophet Makandiwa was talking about this with me today. 
a lot of you have had very good ideas over the last couple of years. You've had some incredible, incredible, incredible ideas. You've had to put these ideas on a shelf. You've had to bury these ideas because you thought the country was not conducive for your ideas. So you took these wild ideas you had, these great ideas you've had, and you've put them. Now is the time when you have to go and you take out those ideas back and you ask yourself the question, how do I put these ideas to use? Now is the time to put those ideas back to use. My job. My job over the next eight months is anybody who's had an idea that can move this country forward and you didn't know how to get that idea to government, I am absolutely interested in working with you. If you've had, if you had, if you've had an idea that can really revolutionize the way we do things in this country, now is the time. Some of you, God has given you some incredible ideas that God gave you. Okay? He put wisdom in your minds of how we can turn things around in our country. Don't spend the next eight months just complaining. Just spend the next eight months taking that same energy and using that energy to keep the country going forward, to make your ideas come to reality and make yourself some money. Zimbabweans, make yourself some money. There is nothing wrong with making money. I am amazed when I hear people talking about making money like it's a bad thing. Guys, make your money. Gotta watch. Gotta I want you to make money. I speak blessings over your life, prosperity over your lives. I'm going to be making money. Absolutely. Zimbabwe as a country is going to be making money. Why do you want to be the Zimbabwean who is just typing? Hmm? The Zimbabwean who is just typing. So, that's it. Let's all make money, people. I want to know. If you, if you want to make money over the next eight months, and you, want me to and you want me to help you understand how to make money in Zimbabwe, hit the like button. Press the like button if you're committed to making money over the next eight months. Because I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you guys how money is going to be made in this country. If you're committed to making money over the next eight months, press the like button. If anybody is. Okay? If you understand the opportunity before us, okay, you would be interested in making money over the next eight months. I can tell you, I can tell you. It's the black Zimbabweans. I now have white friends, huh? Plenty and Indian friends in Zimbabwe who are just making money in this country because they understand it. They are not worried about what you are worried about. Huh? White Zimbabweans, Indian Zimbabweans, colored Zimbabweans, you know, Greek Zimbabweans, they are not even worried about the things you are worried about. They are so focused and so committed to making money now while you and me are busy here just in making noise. Zimbabweans, we have an opportunity over the next eight months, to organize ourselves, okay, to organize ourselves and be prosperous in our own country. Your ideas are now needed, okay? This is not about Lumumba, this is not about Mnangagwa, this is not about Zano PF, it's about you answering one question at a personal level. Answer this one question What do you want hope you can answer that i gotta go i love you uh still and i don't know who's the cabinet so i know people that ask me about the cabinet so you put a video like a pair down with us which are big no which are going to get booty here and which are going to get big so i'm not soon was an atom and a chumbo when we're going to go i'm going to go to the game i'm going to go to the Okay, guys? All right. So, as you can see, I was having my sadza. I got to go finish my sadza. Good night, guys.